Hello everyone and welcome to another RenPy tutorial. Um, on today's video I'm going to be answering a couple of viewer questions. The first one is regarding um, using lists dynamically in a menu um, as well as in our in the text of our game. So I've already done a video on lists before. Be sure to check that one out if you haven't already. I'll link to it above. Um, having a pretty good understanding of, of the basic of basics of lists in Python uh, will go a long way towards helping you understand this one. And I also got another question uh, regarding how to control the dialog box uh, within the game in order to give yourself more control over uh, the pacing of your dialog and when you want that dialog window to appear and when you want it hidden. So uh, we're going to tackle both of those today. But before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already so you never miss one of my new videos. And also consider checking out my Patreon. I will link to it in the description below and on screen right now. I'm offering some extra perks to patrons, including a one week early access to all of my new videos. And I'm also offering uh, downloads of any of the art assets that I use in my videos going forward. So if you want to follow along with the exact assets that I'm using in my videos, you'll be able to download those as well. So be sure to check that out. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to work through this list example. So the question that I received from a user was about um, having the player be able to select uh, from a certain list of weapons and then have the game remember uh, the weapon that the player chose. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, I'm going to create a couple of variables and I'm going to use the default keyword. Um, so whenever you declare variables, um, if it's something that's going to change, uh, you want to use the default keyword. So I'm going to say default and I'm going to create a variable called weapon list and I'm going to put three weapons in here. I'm going to do sword, axe, and we'll do dagger. So those are the three weapons that you can choose from and I'm just storing these as a list of strings. Um, so each of those should be separated by a comma and of course they're in uh, single quotes. You could use double quotes, whatever you like, just as long as you're consistent. And then the next variable that I'm going to create is called chosen weapon. And this one, I'm just going to, to store it as an empty string for right now. So there's nothing in there because we haven't chosen a weapon yet, but when we choose one, we're gonna store it in this variable. So one thing that's very important whenever you're choosing variables is make sure that your variables serve only a single purpose. So in the example that the viewer sent me, uh, he had the weapons list store the list of weapons, actually I think you just called it weapons, uh, and then stored a list there. And then later, after they chose a weapon, he basically cleared the list out and just put that one chosen weapon uh, under this variable. Um, but uh, again, you want to make sure that your variables only serve one purpose. So I've got one variable that is the list of weapons and one variable that is only the chosen weapon that the player is going to pick. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a menu uh, to allow our player to choose a weapon. Um, and we're only going to give them the option if that weapon exists in the list. So we're going to say uh, sword, oops, if sword in weapons. So basically this is saying that we're going to give them the option to select sword, but only if the string sword is inside of this list of weapons. Actually, that should be weapon list. There we go. Only if it exists inside that list variable is it going to give that as an option. And we'll just pass for right now. We'll come back and populate this in a moment. And let's go ahead and do that for our other ones. Axe, if axe in weapon list, pass. And then dagger, if dagger in weapon list and pass. There we go. And so what we want to do is whenever the player selects uh, one of these items, um, we're going to do a couple of different things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set that as the chosen weapon. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to remove it from the weapon list. So for instance, if they wanted to go back, if they had the opportunity to go back and choose another weapon later, in addition to their first weapon, they won't be able to select the same we weapon twice because we're going to completely remove it from the list. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna do this as a Python statement block. So the first thing we're gonna do is set, oops, whoa, I don't know what happened there. So we're gonna set chosen weapon 
equal to whatever they just picked. So that's going to be a sword. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove that item from the list. And the way that we use that is with weapons dot remove and then the name of the item that we want to remove like that weapons dot remove and then in parentheses sword and make sure again that sword is in either single or double quotes all right and let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other two so create a python block chosen weapon equals axe and then weapons dot remove axe and finally, the same thing for dagger. There we go. And just to kind of illustrate um, that this is all working, after that menu, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a couple of blocks of text and we're going to say, you chose, and then we're going to say chosen weapon. And so again, whenever you call a variable in dialog in RemPy, you have to put it in brackets, these square brackets, and then it will just give you the name of whatever that uh, whatever is stored in that chosen weapon variable. All right, and then I'm going to say remaining weapons are. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to call the remaining weapons by index. So since we removed one weapon from a list of three, there are going to be two weapons remaining in the list. Now, I don't know what those weapons are going to be because I don't know what the player is going to choose. So instead, I'm just going to call the two remaining weapons by index. And remember that Python uses zero-based indexing. So the first item in a list is not going to be one. It's going to be zero. The first item is zero. The second item is one the third item is two, the fourth item is three, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna uh, put square brackets again because we're calling a variable, and it's going to be weapon list as the variable that I'm accessing. And then I'm gonna do another square bracket for my index, and we're gonna put that as index zero. So remaining weapons are weapon list zero and weapon list, again, square brackets, and one. There we go, and that's it, and that should do it. So let me go ahead and go in and check that out. I don't have any graphics or anything dropped in here right now, so it's just gonna be a blank screen, which I am okay with. Um, and, oh, actually, let's do this real quick. I'm gonna put in a little bit of a uh, little bit of text there in the beginning, which I should have done. I'm gonna say, choose your weapon. There we go, now let's try that again. <clears throat> Start. There we go. So it says choose your weapon. Now we can pick sword, axe, or dagger. I'm going to pick sword. Oops. Um, oh, I made a mistake. Let me go. I can fix that real quick. Yep, I forgot. Um, in my test code, I called this weapons and then just decided on the spur of the moment to call it weapon list. So let me fix that real quick. So whenever I do these videos, I always like to include my debugging process. There is a reason that I don't edit all of this stuff out, even though I could. But I want everybody to see that a lot of this stuff is trial and error. You will make mistakes as you go along, and it's really important to be able to, to recognize your mistakes and go back and realize what you did and fix it. So I, I really like you all to see, uh, to see that process kind of as it happens. All right, make sure that's saved. All right, let's go back and try that again. It should work now. There we go, choose your weapon. Let's choose sword. It says you chose sword. Remaining weapons are axe and dagger, just like we expected. Now let's go back and do that again. And let's select a different weapon this time. All right, now let's choose dagger. You chose dagger. Remaining weapons are sword and axe. And I don't have to check the third one. I, I trust that my code is gonna work okay. But that's all you really have to do in order to dynamically use your lists and control them um, um, with a menu and, and to call them in your dialogue. So it is relatively simple. Again, if you know the basics of how lists work, and uh, of course, be sure to check out my earlier, earlier video on lists and using lists in RenPy if you're confused by any of this, and that should explain everything and get you up to speed. All right, so on my next one, for my next question, um, I had somebody that was asking about how to control the dialogue box. So they wanted to be able to hide the dialogue box when a new character appears. And this is actually 
really, really simple to do. But I'm going to go ahead and get some uh, code put in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a scene, scene BG lights. And let's go ahead and show a character. Let's show Lana neutral. I'm going to put her at left with dissolve. And she's going to introduce herself. Hello, my name is Lana. And then after that, we're going to show another character. We're going to show, uh, let's do Chelsea neutral at right. Also with dissolve. And she is going to say, hello, my name is Chelsea. All right, so let's run that just to see what we're in for. All right, so we show Lana. She says, hello, my name is Lana. And then Chelsea, hello, my name is Chelsea. So you'll notice that in between um, when that other, when my Chelsea character is, is in the process of appearing, this whole dialog box down here stays on the screen. But what if we didn't want that to happen? What if we wanted this dialog box to disappear in between? Um, there is a really, really simple way to do that. Um, so after Lana delivers her line, we're going to hide the dialog box. And all we have to do is say window hide. That's it, that's all. Now I'm gonna go back and run that. So Lana introduces herself, and then after this, the box is going to hide. And then Chelsea appears, and then it reappears when she introduces herself. And there are a couple of extra things that we can do um, to exercise a little bit more control over that. Um, for instance, what if we wanted the character to appear and have her stay on the screen indefinitely before that dialog box um, appears? Um, let's do, actually, first of all, I'll show you how to do, you can apply transitions to this just like you do with your scene or with your characters by saying, you know, with dissolve. Um, you do that just the same way, but you don't have to use the with keyword. You can just say window hide dissolve, and then it will dissolve that window uh, instead of making it disappear abruptly. Then we're gonna show Chelsea, and let's say we wanted her to um, appear on the screen for like a second before her dialogue appears. We can just put in a pause statement, pause 1.0. So now it'll show the background, it'll show Lana, she'll introduce herself, the window will dissolve, it'll fade away, then it'll show Chelsea, pause for one second, and then she'll introduce herself. Let's try that and see what it looks like. So it dissolves away, she appears, one second, and then the dialog box appears again. And I'll tell you what, let's exercise even a little more control over that. Let's say we want the player to decide when that dialog box comes up. So if you want something to pause indefinitely, you can use the pause statement with no argument. So with no number after it, then it will pause until the player clicks somewhere on the screen. Then, uh, let's say we don't want the uh, dialog box to appear abruptly, but we want it to kind of fade, dissolve in like we did when we hit it. So now we're going to do window show dissolve. And then when the player clicks the screen, the window will dissolve back into view and it'll deliver that final line. So let's try this. <clears throat> All right, so Lana shows up, introduces herself. Then Chelsea appears, and I'm not gonna hit anything, and it will stay on this screen indefinitely. Nothing will happen until I click the screen. But whenever I'm ready, I'll click it. Then the dialog box slowly fades in, and Chelsea delivers her line. So again, a really, really simple to do. All you have to do is the window hide and the window show statement. Um, there's also, there's a, a, a third window control statement that is window auto and that one is left on by default and that way the game automatically decides when to hide and when to show the uh, the dialog box um, but you shouldn't need to use that one too much though um, but again yeah using window show and window hide you can you can you know kind of determine uh, when those appear um, you can also use any of the other transitions that you would normally use I'll give you one more real quick let's do uh, pixelate just to show you a different option that you have there. All 
And now when it disappears, there you go. And that actually affects the whole screen, but nah, it's okay. It's still kind of a cool effect. There we go. All right. Um, that will about do us for this video. So again, if you got something out of this, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Visit me on patreon.com so you can get my videos a week early. Um, if you're unable to donate monetarily, no worries. You'll get the same great content that you're used to absolutely for free. Um, so you just might get a little bit early with a couple of extra perks um, if you decide that you want to make a monthly pledge. Um, so thanks again for watching. Um, oh, I just hit 700 subscribers uh, the other day. So thank you very much for that. I'm trying very, very hard to get uh, monetized. I've got to hit a thousand subscribers and I need 4,000 watch hours, but we're getting there. I hope to get there in the next few months. Uh, so again, just keep watching. Thank you very much. And we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.